Hello there. The latest net migration figures just hammers another nail into the Tory coffin. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and then like and comment below. These latest net migration figures will be very worrying for die-hard Tory supporters. But the WEF Tory puppets in their higher echelons, who are building back better for the Great Reset, will only be disappointed that the cat has now jumped out of the bag. Because the latest data from the ONS shows that net migration into the UK hit a record 504,000 in the year to June 2022. That's just about a whole new Manchester. This is 331,000 more than the 173,000 we welcomed in the year to June 2021. Nearly three times as many. Just over one million arrived here and 560,000 people left the UK. And these are the people who are either arriving or leaving for a year or more for any reason. But it does appear that where there were once visas, we now have confetti. No wonder Rishi Sunak wants to force the housing industry to build 300,000 new homes every year. Now, Suella Braverman recently told a parliamentary committee that it was getting harder to source hotel accommodation. And the government has been giving out money as an incentive for households to give up their empty rooms for the likes of the Ukrainian refugees. So it sounds to me like the government is fast running out of options of where to put all these people. While it also appears that this Tory government has absolutely no intention of getting a grip on border control. So if this increased trend continues, how long will it be before we see compulsory purchase and emergency powers to level up the utilisation of the housing stock? In January this year, the ONS projected the UK population will increase from a 2020 baseline of 67.1 million to 69.2 million in 2030, up just over 3%. That's 2.1 million people more over the next 10 years. But we've already just seen half a million increase in one year alone. And those ONS figures are used for planning purposes. Hospitals, schools, roads, waterworks and energy consumption estimates. Where we now hear that blackouts are on the cards. Now, going on previous increases, the English Channel will, in all likelihood, provide a route for nearer 100,000 people next year. From that one single route alone. Now, a warning here. These ONS figures are provisional figures based on experimental estimates. And it all comes down to whether or not they're using climate change or pandemic forecasting software. If they are, then the numbers could be out by a Ferguson. However, if they are anywhere near correct and the high levels are maintained, then we face a stark choice. Build like crazy and build again, or significantly reduce the numbers coming in. But either way, unless the fragmented centre-right of politics gets its act together, prepare for a Tory party meltdown at the next general election and more of the same and worse, under a Labour government. And adding insult to injury, the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, is telling householders to slash energy use by 15% to defeat Putin. More people coming in, less energy per person. And the government will be splashing out 25 million quid on an information campaign to wean us off of using energy. Has he no idea that most ordinary people who do not have 80 plus grand a year jobs and energy bills paid for out of expenses have already done everything they can to limit their energy use in the face of huge electricity and gas bills? Now, this isn't just the UK. The EU is also looking to cut energy usage by 13 percent. 
and France has had to delay restarting three of its nuclear reactors, meaning that they might have no electricity to spare to send to us over the interconnectors until early December if we need it. And the blame for all this is being placed on the Russians when all the blame lies fairly and squarely with successive governments of all brands, and don't forget the EU in this too, that comprehensively failed to provide the energy security we're now finding out is so vitally important. But I get the feeling that this is also being used as a virtue signalling opportunity by them to force us to use less energy and go cold, or more likely, welcome to the new normal. So we're now being told that there is an egg shortage and egg rationing and that it's all down to bird flu. And we're shown images of chickens locked up in their coops safely away from avian flu carrying wildlife. But this is not the whole story. In fact, it isn't the story at all. According to egg farmers, the egg shortage is all about the supermarkets not being prepared to pay a fair price when buying the eggs from them. In fact, due to their own rising costs, farmers lose money on every dozen eggs they sell to the big supermarket chains. The egg business is no longer viable. Now, according to Farmers Weekly, two million hens have been culled due to the bird flu. But because the farmers can no longer make a profit from eggs, 10 million fewer hens have been ordered for next year's flocks. And according to Countryside Online, there are 39 million commercial laying hens in the UK. So it looks like we're about to lose a quarter of them. Eggs will become a premium food going forwards, it seems. Now, there is a government entity called the Supermarket Ombudsman who should deal with this sort of thing. But they don't seem to be doing much about this. You could be led into thinking that there is a war being waged on our traditional food supplies. Although one supermarket, Waitrose, has promised £2.6 million more for farmers. Now I'll hand you over to Richard who wants to talk to you about the trades unions. Thank you Jeff and good evening. I'm about to go over some old ground so please forgive me. But context is imperative when dissecting world events, and identity politics has ruined perspective in such matters. We face a winter of discontent with nurses, rail workers, and civil servants all planning to strike, and everyone is blaming the left. But for once, when it comes to the left, we are wrong. When it comes to which side of the political spectrum the unions sit on, the left wing of politics like to kid themselves and others that the union is an expression of the left. It is not. As I have said before, the union takes on a very different and sinister role when placed within the socialist communist society. But in what we can only very loosely call a free market, the union serves a very capitalist function and that is primarily to negotiate the value of the workforce as if it was some form of commodity, which of course the workforce is. We need to view these larger unions for what they actually are. Large corporations with investments and high bargaining power in order to compete with the large corporate interests from which they profit. And don't forget, unions have investments. And where can they invest? Well, obviously within the capitalist system itself. So, if you're a lefty and support the larger unions and go on marches with them, know this, you are inadvertently bolstering the system you rage against. Were you living in a socialist communist society, you would not be a union member, because as I said, the union as it stands does not follow the same remit. And therein lies the problem with large unions, state and corporate structures, they all dictate to the many, yet benefit a small few. So, as we face a winter of discontent, let's remember the unions behind these strikes may be helping workers to get better working conditions and pay, but they do so as capitalist entities. Back over to you, Jeff. Thank you, Richard. 
And finally, when subscribing, please don't forget to press that little bell and also select the all option or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. And thank you all so much for taking the time to watch the show.